It's an absolute joy to be here with all of you today. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedules. I think that you're going to love looking at these products today. And, uh, you know, every year we do seasonal collections, but this was this one was important to us. For the 30th anniversary, we really wanted to take some inspiration from Jane herself. And uh, some of you may know that a lot of the collections that we create, the inspiration for the colors that we use often comes from Jane's garden. Jane is an avid gardener. She'll be the first to tell you she's a country girl at heart. She's originally from the UK. And so if you go to her house in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, you'll see she has this exquisite English garden all the way around her house with beautiful blooms from across the globe. And at certain times of the year, it's going to be coming up soon. You, it's just a color show, fantastic blooms and flowers of a variety of different kinds of natures. And the other really interesting thing is that <clears throat> Jane really loves warm tones. She considers herself an autumn or a spring when it comes to color. So she loves really warm uh, oranges and apricots and peaches and corals and colors like that. So that's what we chose for this year's spring collection for the 30th anniversary. Ready to Bloom is a wonderful assortment of warm tones, peaches, apricots, tones like that. Well, the really cool thing is right as we were bringing it to fruition, right as the collection was getting ready to be launched, we heard from the Pantone people that the Pantone color of the year is peach fuzz, which is really cool because Pantone, of course, is the organization that puts out a color every year and that color often decides what is used in everything from fashion collections to makeup and beauty to home design. They are the authority when it com comes to color. So the fact that we really well synchronized without even knowing it with Pantone this year was, it, we feel like it was a win for us. So I think you're gonna love the way that this collection looks. Um, this is my model, Leah. If you'll take a look into the camera for everybody, Leah, is a friend of mine and she works in the beauty industry as well so she takes excellent care of her skin as you can see she's quite beautiful <laughs> but right now she has no makeup on at all although i did lighten her brows a little bit because she has slightly deeper brows um, for this spring collection what i want to do is i want to put a slightly more matte complexion on her and then we're going to add back in some luminosity in a couple of key places and then we're going to add both of the spring collection colors both the eyeshadows and both of the blushes. So I wanna show you the collection first of all. For the blushes, we have two different colors. One is called Velvet Petal, and that is a more kind of a pinky coral tone. And the other is called Flourish, and that's more of an orangey coral tone. Let me bring that closer so you can see it. So one is warmer and one is slightly cooler, but they're both very much spring tones, very different, different variations of coral and apricot. And then for the eyeshadows, we brought in two different eyeshadow kits. One is called Honeysuckle that has warmer, more, more golden apricot tones. And the other is uh, a cooler called Wildflower. And that has more cool apricot and peach tones in it. So this is a great collection for people that want to, to create a beautiful, intense look without looking overdone or heavy or looking um, too garish. It's perfect for spring. So what we're gonna start with is of course co co complexion. Right now, Leah has on her moisturizer and her skincare, but we're gonna start by putting on a little bit of primer. How many of you out there wear primers? I'd love to hear if you want to put in your chat box. If you're currently wearing primer, then I'd love to hear about it. Because I'll tell you now, primer hasn't always been a huge element of the beauty industry, but it has gained more popularity over the last few decades than it ever did before. And I think the reason for that is that primer helps your makeup to stay on longer and look smoother and last. It also helps it to go on more easily. I'm using our Smooth Affair Mattifying Primer. Rather than doing a luminous complexion, which is something that I do quite often on people, today we're gonna to go for a slightly more matte complexion. So I'm using the Smooth Affair Mattifying Primer. I'm putting that all over her face. I'm also gonna put it on her eyelids 
to give her eyelids a little bit of extra adherence. And I want you to look up for me. Going right up under the eyes with it. Close gently. And then on the eyelids with it. A good primer, what it should do is it should give your makeup something to adhere to and give your makeup a smoother appearance so that it doesn't ever settle into fine lines or pores, so that it looks more airbrushed when it's on the skin. See a little spot right there. Perfect. Look up at the ceiling. Perfect. Now lower your chin and you can look into the camera. Very good. So now that we have her Smooth Affair Primer on, I'm gonna put on her Hyper Tinted Serum. This product, if there's anything that's ever bordered the, the line between skincare and makeup, it's this product. Hydro Pure Tinted Serum is one of my favorite foundation products that I've ever used. I wear it on a regular basis. I love how it looks on my, on my face because it's so natural. The way I'm gonna apply it to Leah is I'm gonna put it on with my fingers. In the past, I've put products like this on with a brush, but I wanna show you how easy it is to apply. You don't need a brush to put this on. Unlike some foundation products, you have to use a brush. This, you can literally put it on with the fingers and massage it out. And it just looks like healthy skin. Sean, what brush did you use to apply the primer? The primer, I use the blending and contouring brush, Thank you. which is a very popular product. And that's very often the brush that I use to apply the HydroPure. Look up at the ceiling and close your eyes. But today I'm putting on the HydroPure with the fingers. And the reason I'm just, I'm, I'm differentiating away from using a brush for the HydroPure is because I want people to see how easy this product is to put on so often I hear women say, oh, I, I can't wear liquid foundations because they're too difficult to put on. This, you can literally just put it on like a moisturizer. And as you put it onto the skin, you'll see that it just gives a nice, fresh appearance that doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look overdone. It just looks like healthy skin. Look up at the ceiling. The other thing you'll notice is that when I put it on her, I'm not just taking it onto the face. I'm taking it down onto her neck a little bit as well. Because we want those goodies. There's liposome technology that time releases antioxidants and vitamins into the skin long after you've applied it. So again, her skin doesn't look too shiny. It looks nice and even and fresh. Does it feel like you're wearing anything, Leah? It feels very light. Yeah, and that's yeah. the key. If it feels like you're wearing something, then there's probably something wrong. You really want it to be weightless on the skin. And now that we have her, her foundation product on, her liquid foundation product, I'm gonna go in with her concealer before I do her pure press base. And the reason I'm doing concealer first is because I'm gonna finish the whole thing up with her pure press base to kind of continue that mattification. For her under eye area, I'm gonna use some of our Enlighten Plus Concealer, which is one of my favorites for addressing darkness around the eyes and brightening the under eye. And I'm gonna use that with my foundation brush. And as you can see, a little bit of the product goes a long ways. You don't need a lot to accomplish the result that you're trying to achieve. I'm gonna put it under the eye, right up to the lash line, what shade of Enlightened Plus does Leah wear? She wears number one. And number one is one of my favorites because it has a lot of peach in it. I can also use that number one if she has any dark spots or discoloration that we want to address. So it's great for hyperpigmentation, great for freckles, but especially good for the under eye area. Now this concealer has about the same level of depth as her skin does, but it's a bit peachier. And the key is peach neutralizes gray. It neutralizes black, any kind of discoloration in the skin. 
it will neutralize that so that you'll have a more even complexion. If you put a light color over a dark circle, you can end up looking gray or ashy. Look up at the ceiling. Now I'm going to tap, tap. Tap, tap. And then that is not the concealer that I'm going to use to highlight her. If I wanted to highlight her, I want to use something a little lighter. So for a lighter concealer, I'm going to use our new Pure Match Concealer, which has been a tremendously successful product for us. It's been a great launch here. I'll just put it in the back of my hand. Everybody's loving that Pure Match is so versatile and that it comes in 16 different shades. And I'm going to put a little bit of light here, here, here. I'm also going to go between the brows, in the nasal area, the corners of the mouth, and a little bit of extra just in the deepest part of the under eye to create volume. And as you've heard me say before, if you've tuned into some of my previous webinars, light elevates or pushes forward, dark recesses and pushes back. Now I'm using a different brush to do her blending. I'm using the dome brush, which we often use for blush. But when we use it for concealer, what it does is it blends away any lines of demarcation, but it leaves the intensity of the color. Oftentimes, if you use a, blue, a beauty blender to blend away concealer, it takes the concealer off and you lose some of the coverage that you've gotten. Using a brush leaves the pigment behind and it doesn't compromise the coverage. It just takes away the lines of demarcation. Look up at this. And what concealer shade are you using today, Sean? I'm using number three. Okay. So the three is a lighter and more yellow concealer. The Enlightened and Plus was closer to her skin tone and it was more peach. And in Lighten Plus, when you did that under her eyes, was that the, the foundation brush that you were using to apply that? It was. And I like to use the foundation brush when I'm applying in Lighten Plus because I'm laying it down, putting it in a wide area. This concealer that I just used, I was using more like lines of color and then blending them out at the end. So I wanted something more delicate for that. So we can see she's got this beautiful, fresh complexion now light in the areas that we want light, depth in the areas that we want depth. Now we can go in and enhance that depth by putting on some Pure Press base to finish her complexion and take away any last little bits of shine. And then we're gonna also go in with blush and bronzer. I'm gonna use her Pure Press base, which is Warm Sienna. I'm taking it in a smooth downward direction on her face. And of course, I'm using the handy brush for that, which everybody knows is the brush of choice when you're doing pure press base. One of the things I love about using the handy brush is that it spreads the product out as you're dispersing it. Now, for people that have tuned into our previous classes, who knows why I go downward when I'm putting on Pure Press Base? Who can tell me? There's a reason that we go down, not up. Do you see anybody answering the question? Chrissy? I don't see anybody answering the question. Oh, wait. Oh, I think Maureen got it right. The hair on your face. Very good. Yep, that's exactly why. <laughs> yeah, Maureen. <laughs> Yeah, if you go up with the powder, what that has a tendency to do is get it caught in the little fellas hairs on the face. 
and then you end up looking textural. By going downward with everything, it lays down the hairs on the face and makes everything look smoother. Close gently. Very good. So now she's got a really nice, smooth matte complexion. Those highlights and shadows are coming through. And in the spirit of the, of the spring collection, and also to go with her beautiful blouse, I'm going to use the Calming Lavender Hydration Spray, which people absolutely love. Remember that when you spritz, inhale, hold your breath. Don't be afraid to use about eight or ten spritzes. What that's going to do is it's going to meld the makeup to the face and turn it from a powder into a liquid for just a moment, and that bonds it to the skin, and now it'll stay all day. How's it feel? Light. Still light. Yeah. And we have, we've layered primer, hydropure tinted serum, two kinds of concealer, pure press base, and hydration spray, and it still feels light on the skin. So that's, that's what we're shooting for is that kind of effect. So I want to use all of the products in the spring collection. I'm going to use them in, in conjunction with each other. The first one I want to show you is my favorite, which is the spring blush. Again, this is a very apricotty, corally kind of color. So when we put it on her skin, the way we're going to do it is we're going to do it with the chisel powder brush. And right now, blush, as you've seen me do before, is higher place than we used to do. So I'm going to start the blush up in the temples and pull it onto her cheeks. And you can see when she turns to the side, that soft bit of warmth in there. Turn this way. And that one is Flourish or is that Velvet Petal? That's the flourish. Perfect. Thank you. Because I want her, I want her complexion to have a little bit more apricot to it. We can go back in and put a little bit of the velvet petal in there, just in the high point of the temple. But I want the primary blush color to be the flourish because I really want that to show through. It's such a dynamic color, and it lo really looks beautiful on the skin. Well, let's do something real quick. I want to turn down the light just a bit so that she looks not so heavy, not so washed out. Sometimes the light can really tone down the brightness of the complexion. Very good. And then if you kind of lean a little bit more forward to it, towards the camera, people can see. You can see that peachy color on her cheeks, how fresh that is. Good, good, good. And then if I wanted to use the, the, the velvet petal, which is the even pinker one, I can get some of that and place it also at the back of the cheek, just at the back of the cheek, but not as far up as the flourish. And that just gives a bit more intensity. Now for her eyeshadows, what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting a little bit of extra product on her eyelid to give her eyeshadows something to adhere to. I, I, I have really fallen in love with using our um, concealer as eyeshadow. Both the Pure Match and the Enlightened Plus work great on the eyelids. I'm going to use a little bit of Pure Match close gently, and I'm going to tap it on with my fingers, and I'm going to put it all over the lid and up to the brow bone. I'm also going to carve that out a bit above her brow using a camouflage brush. And I don't know if everybody is familiar with the term carving out the brows, but it's a very popular technique for making the brows look more defined. And the way we do it is we use a camouflage brush 
and we get the color along the top of the, the, the brow, and this is her, her concealer, and we create a line of definition right at the brow, making the brow look more perfected with that little highlight of color right on the edge of the brow line. You can see the difference. See how that just bumps it up a little bit? Let's do it on the other side, taking it across the brow. So you can really see that color. Hey everybody, we have a lot of great questions coming in and we love the enthusiasm to learn. It helps our team behind the scenes if you can use the Q&A widget to ask your questions versus the chat, because then that for sure makes sure that we don't miss anybody. Thank you. So what are some of the questions that we're getting there? We're getting a lot of great questions. I think a few of them we'll save until the end for our Q&A. Um, a lot of like, what's the difference between like this concealer and that concealer and a couple of things specifically about like skin tone. I think one thing that would be good to debunk is um, whether or not all skin types can use these nice peachy tones. I think I'm we're seeing a lot of people who are like questioning whether or not they might look good on them. So people are often surprised because when they, I, I, I don't think that peaches are something that people naturally gravitate towards. And so when they do put peach on the skin, they're like, oh, it doesn't look orange. It just looks like healthy skin. The other thing is if you have natural redness in your skin that you're trying to neutralize, then don't wear a red or pink blush because that's going to make the red come back. Using an, a peachy or apricot blush will sometimes warm up the skin and neutralize a little bit of that redness. So it's a great way to make the skin look fresh without looking too red. <clears throat> but my answer to that is most people can wear peach and they just have never thought of trying it before. So don't be surprised if you put it on and you ended up liking it more than you've ever liked any blush you've ever worn before. Okay, so I'm gonna go into her eyes now with some eyeshadow colors. We're gonna start with the honeysuckle, which is the warmer peach tones. And I'm going to use the middle color, which is a color I can go lighter than or darker than. And I'm going to put that middle color all over her entire eyelid. I'm using my crease brush to apply that. And I'm taking it from corner to corner, from the lash line up to the crease, and I'm really hollowing out the whole socket of her eye with it. The only place I'm really not putting it is up on the brow bone, although I am going to pull it out from the corner of her eye towards the corner of her brow to create some lift in that direction. Look up. Very nice. Again, using my crease brush, I'm taking that color all over her eyelid. From the lash line, all the way up. The only place I'm not really putting it is on the brow bone, but I am pulling it out to the corner of the brow from the outer edge. Okay. You can see that warm color surrounding her eye. I'm also going to take that same color using my smudge brush. Oh, I have it here. Here we are. 
I'm going to take that same color, look up at the ceiling, along her lower lash line, surrounding the under eye with it, and pulling it down. Turn this way. Chrissy, when you do your eyes, do you ever smoke them out underneath with shadow like this? I do. And then I generally like to, to clean up my mess on, underneath my eyes with a concealer afterwards, just to, uh, just to get like a more defined line as I, as you work out. So you do, do you typically do your eyeshadow before you do your concealer? So I will, I will do my pure press, my primer. And then if I do liquid, I'll do the hydro pure and then pure pressed base. And then, then I will do my blush and then my eyeshadow. And then generally I go in and do concealer afterwards. Ah, okay. <laughs> Everybody likes to do it in a, you know, a different order and a different application mood. I'm going to go this time. I'm going to use the, the wild flower, which is the the cooler tones, and I'm gonna get the darkest color from this, and I'm gonna carve out the outer corner of her eye out here, pulling it from the outer lash line all the way up to the crease, and then blending. Now, I'm not gonna take it all the way in her crease across, because I don't wanna make her eye look more deep set. I More than anything, I wanna make them look far set further apart, opened up. And the beautiful thing about this color is it blends really nicely into the other color that we've used. And is that still the smudge brush you have in your hand? Oh, or it's the eye shader. It's the eye shader brush. So it's a little bit larger than the other one. You could use the smudge brush, but you'd have to work a lot harder. By using the eye shader brush, you cover more area with less strokes. Whenever I change colors, I'll typically change brushes because then I get a true color with each time. And again, I'm blending that up and out just a bit so that we have a little lift at the end. Open. Gorgeous. Hold on. A little more right here in the lash line. Take a look into the camera. Can you see yourself in the mirror? Mm -hmm. you like lifted. Yeah. Very nice and lifted. Now, underneath her eyes, let's warm them up a little bit more. I'm going to go back into the wildflower, and I'm going to get some of this coral color, which is the really, really warm tone. And I'm going to focus some of that that warm coral along her lash line underneath, right in the center of her eye. Turn this way. Coral colors under the eyes are a great alternative to blacks and browns under the eyes. And she's got a vivid green eye, so it's a great way to pop the green in her eyes and make it I'm out even more. Look up at the ceiling. Very nice. We've got a little Kate Winslet thing going on on camera. I have to <laughs> I'll take it. She's gorgeous. Now I'm going to go to our highlight colors. <clears throat> and I'm going to get, first of all, 
Let's go back onto the wildflower. I'm going to get this pinky color that's in the wildflower. Open and look down for me. I'm going to put the, the pinky tone all on her lid. All on the inner lid from the, the, the inner eye to the middle of the lid and blend it open. And that's such a fresh color. It makes the eye look so bright and healthy. It's lighter than the skin, but it has a severe coolness to it that I think is so nice. Open. Look up at the ceiling. I'll also take some of that from the inner corner into her middle of her eye where the coral tone is underneath. As well, you can use this color on the brow bone. And that's kind of an expected area for such warm tones to be. Or such fresh tones to be, that is. And then we can finish it with some shimmer. I'm going to get the gold color that's in the honeysuckle. And I'm going to tap some of that in the center of her eyelid. Where she blinks. To catch the light a bit more. And if you're having a challenge getting it to stick. Over the top of the matte shadow. And my recommendation is to go back in with your hydration spray. Inhale, hold your breath. Spritz it, and that sets it so that when you want to go back in now, that'll give you some better adherence with that shimmer. And why did you choose your finger to apply uh, the shimmer shade? Because you can compact down a lot of color in one place with the tip of your finger. Now, if you feel like you just absolutely need to use a brush to do it, the brush that I would probably use is the chisel shader, which is the white shader brush. That has a firm consistency to it, and it's great for picking up a lot of pigment and lay it down right there in the center and you get more intensity that way. You can really see that gold catching the light there now. I'm a big advocate of shimmer in the center of the lid. I feel like it's a great place to catch light. Open, beautiful. Now we don't have to use liner on her, but if she was gonna use a liner, I would probably do a pencil rather than doing a liquid or a mystical. And the reason for that, close gently, is I don't want to make her eyes look sharp or overdone or heavy. I, I know that like the winged liner was, was such a big trend over the last couple of years. I, I'm not a big advocate of the winged liner because so many women have difficulty wearing it. By doing a pencil liner closer to the lash line, you can get a softer look. It gives just, the, just as much nice definition without having the, the opportunity to pull the eye down like a wing sometimes can. A lot of women don't have the skill to do a good wing liner. So my philosophy is to make it easier just go on the top lashes. If you're going to go and you want to try to create lift, then just make it thicker at the outer corner and thinner as it goes in, but you don't have to go past the eye. Or create. And what, what shade of liner are you using there? I'm using our black brown right on her lash line. 
And that's really beautiful on her. And then I'll finish that with some of our Beyond Lash Mascara, which is, as many of you know, one of my favorite mascaras we've ever launched. I just love it because it's black, it's inky, it's intense. Um, it's easy to use and it quickly saturates the lashes to give a nice finished look. Look straight ahead for me, right about here and a little lower, perfect. I'll just put this behind your lashes. Gorgeous. You have a natural curl to your lashes. It's not natural. <laughs> really? Do you get them permed? I do it myself. That's really good. Thank you. Almost done over here. So if you didn't perm them, do they go down naturally? Oh, they're just not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. And then we're going to finish this look using, of course, the product that has been um, a feature of this spring collection, which is our Forever Peach. Now, like a lot of complexion colors and a lot of uh, blush colors, people are reluctant to put peaches and oranges on their lips. But when they put it on, they're often surprised at how it looks. Now, the Forever Peach has an interesting dynamic to it that when, when you touch it to the lips, it changes color. So when you look at it in the container, it looks like it's going to be a very light kind of nude orange. But remember that there's an ingredient in there called triisosterol citrate that reacts to the pH of your lips and changes color when you put it on, creating this beautiful vivid orange or coral or apricot that is specific to your pH. So I'm going to touch that to her lips. And as I pull it across, you can see that it's immediately turning into this fresh coral color. Gosh, that's gorgeous on you. This way for me. And do you go over your lips a little bit when you do your lips? On the top I do at the bow. Good, good. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, I like a fuller lip right now. The Forever Peach is a nice product to do that with also because it's so sheer. So it makes it look a little bit like a gloss. And then touch your lips together. It gives her these fresh, kissable lips that look so beautiful. And do you love the way it feels? That's my favorite yeah. lip product, yeah. It's got all kinds of wonderful essential oils and botanical emollients that are in there. And um, lots of key antioxidants that help to improve the skin of the lips, keep them healthy. So... I wish you could, you guys could see it in person because it actually looks much more intense when you look at it in person than it does on the Zoom camera, but um, she wears it really, really well. <laughs> so. so does anybody have any questions about the products that I've applied to Leah? We do have some questions. Um, one question that we had come up as you were spritzing the lavender hydration spray was just the differences between the hydration sprays, if you wouldn't mind running through those briefly. Sure. The lavender is really popular in the spring because a lot of people love the, the lavender smell, but it's a little bit more scientific than just the smell. Lavender is soothing and calming to the skin and we combine it with chamomile, which is also soothing and calming. And then there's also Mira Maize extract in there. And Mira Maize comes from the Mira Maize plant, which uh, they often call the resurrection plant. It's, it grows in the deserty areas of South Africa and it goes for months and months without water and it withers and looks like it's completely dead. And then one little rain shower and it completely revitalizes. 
So it's called the resurrection plan. So that's what we're harnessing for this is that over ability to overcome long bouts of dehydration. Next, we have our balance hydration spray, the gold bottle. This is for oily skin. It has citrus extracts that lower oil production and green tea extract to combat acne causing bacteria. And then the blue one, when you see the blue, always think water. That's D2O, which is our favorite for really dry, dehydrated skin. It has chamomile and ylang-ylang in it. And then finally, the red one, which is the most popular, is palm mist, pomegranate. And pomegranate is a powerful antioxidant and a free radical scavenger. So it's great for people that are outdoorsy, people that have active lifestyles that are exposed to a lot of, of free radical damage, like people that live in urban areas or hikers, joggers, also good for people that smoke cigarettes or party a lot, because it's gonna help to <laughs> contradict some of that <laughs> lifestyle damage that we're doing. But um, as, as well, it's good for people with hyperpigmentations, dark spots, discoloration, things like that. Cindy asked a, a really good question. She was wondering how how much the that Just Kissed uh, lip product will vary from person to person? Like, is it, is there a big variance or? It's interesting that you asked that because I've been doing events across the country for the launch of our spring collection. And I'm astounded when I see some people get this light, fresh kind of coral color like she has. Other people I've seen deep kind of burnt orange tones look like really intense. I've seen other people that look, it looks completely pink and you don't see any orange when you put it on them. So it really, it varies from person to person based on your pH. It's supposed to kind of choose the perfect color for you. Awesome. Um, we had a couple of people who asked about scars and what might be the best product to cover up a scar on the face. Well, scars are three-dimensional. So if there's an area where there's a physical bump or recess the only way you can address that with makeup would be to put light either under the bump to hide the three-dimensional quality of it and hide the shadow that the bump produces, or light inside of the scar if it's a recess to mask the, the recess and, and put light in there so it doesn't look like it's so deep. The problem with covering or masking scars with makeup is that you are subject to the light that you're in. So it might look good for a picture, you can do it, it's great. If your light source is one way and then you put light in the scar and it hides the scar, that works perfectly. But as soon as you go outside or in a different room and the light changes, then that light might become visible and the scar might become visible again. So my recommendation for people that have recessed scars, they have incredible technology out there with fillers where they can literally inject filler in the recess and pop it out or with people that are having three-dimensional scars that are a bump on the face, there's a lot of great technology out there with lasers where they can laser the bump and help to smooth it down and make it look so, like, not, like it's not sticking up so far, so. Eileen was curious why you didn't use mascara on Leah's lower eyelashes. Ah, that's the question I get all the time. So I'm not a big advocate of using mascara underneath the eyes because it has a tendency to pull the eyes down. You'll notice that I didn't put any black eyeliner or dark color under her eyes at all. People see what information you give them. If I put lots of light above the eye, if I put lots of dark above the eyes and in the outer corners of the eyes, then that's the direction it pulls the eyes is up and out. If I put lots of dark underneath the eyes, I'm pulling the eyes down and we don't want to give mother nature any help. Mm. We want to keep it all lifted up. Right. Right. Mm. Um, so, you know, sun season is every season here at lovely skin, but the, the big sun season is upon us. And we've had a couple of people ask, um, about how to use the, uh, Jane Iredell powder me sunscreen on top yes. of their makeup application. Well, the, the beauty of Powder Me SPF is that you don't have to really have a lot of skill to apply it. If I want to put Powder Me SPF over the top of her look, all I have to do is go in with the product and, and you can use it literally like a finishing powder and carry it with you to touch up through the day. I just turn it and remember that when you use this on the back of the container, there's a little lock button. You're going to turn it. And here's the unlock symbol. You're going to turn it until the arrow clicks. And when it clicks, I'm sorry, 
when it clicks and it's directly underneath the unlock symbol, then you know it's working. And then what I'm going to do with that, hold on, I'm going to let the camera come back into focus again, is I'm going to get the powdering SPF and I'm going to just dust it onto the skin. Just working it, and you can do it in circles, you can, you can do it in a smooth downward direction like you would your pure press base. But it's an easy product to use. And then if you want to take the brush out and clean it, you can simply pull it out and remove it and you'll get great results. Look up at the ceiling. And I love this powder because you can literally put it right up under the eyes. It doesn't bring out any texture or any wrinkles. But see how that kind of gave her face a nice little optic diffusion. It's a great, it's a great SPF of 30. It's physical, so broad spectrum, both UVA and UVB protection. And there is Montmorillonite in there, which is a healing clay that soothes and calms the skin. It'll even take redness out of an existing sunburn. And can you do the hydration spray on top of the Powder Me foundation as well? You can, but a lot of people choose not to. They use it to control shine. It's like a mattifying powder that you can take with you everywhere. So... Um, we have time for maybe two more questions. And Laura actually had a really great question. She she doesn't use the Just Kiss Lip and Cheek Stain, but she's wondering what other color um, in your lipstick collection would look great with the look that you did on Leah today. So if you wanted to do kind of warm, uh, fresh tones to go with the spring collection, there's a couple of lipsticks that we make in our new Color Lux lipsticks. One is Bellini and the other is called Sorbet. And both of them have a little bit of a peach undertone. The Bellini is the more natural, that's like a peachy nude color. Hold on, let me put that up there. A very peachy nude color. And the Sorbet is a true coral. It's really beautiful. It's almost the color of the middle shade of the, of the eyeshadow in the wildflower. So both of those are great colors to go with this spring collection. And remember, with our lipsticks, these are made from cocoa butter, so they're very hydrating. There's also Portolaca pelosa flower, uh, otherwise known as the Kiss Me Quick flower. It's a flower that has a lot of antioxidant protection to support the collagen and elastin of the lips, and then sunflower oil. So it goes on nice and smooth and even. And there's a stain in there as well. So when the color wears off, the stain kicks in. Okay, and I selected Joyce's question to be our final question because I I am just in love with this little application tip that you do every time you do a demonstration for us. But what device are you using when you're applying mascara so that uh -huh. you can get mascara on her eyelid? So when I do when I do mascara on somebody, I'll typically put a business card behind the lashes. So I use my little Jane Iredell business card and I just put it behind the lashes and then you can brush the excess up onto the card and that way it keeps it from getting on your eyelid. Um, and it also gives the lashes a little bit of a lift, which people love. <laughs> That's perfection. I love that tip. <laughs> okay. Well, Sean, thank you so much for demonstrating the Ready to Bloom collection today. Leah, you look amazing, and I'm sure everyone uh, watching agrees. Um, before we close out, maybe we have time for one more question. Let's see here. Lucia is wondering if you have any tips for how to make her blue eyes stand out. Oh, if there's ever a collection that will make your eyes pop. If you have blue eyes, it's gonna be this one. Because remember, if you wanna make blue eyes look bluer, you don't use blue shadow, because that'll the inevitably the synthesized color of a shadow will always look bluer than your eyes. If you go to the opposite end of the color, from, co color spectrum from blue, that's where you get your best enhancement. Copper, orange, peach, coral, all of those colors are perfect for enhancing blue eyes and making them look more blue. So both, uh, my, my favorite for blue eyes is probably the honeysuckle, the one that has the more golden peach tones. I think it looks really gorgeous against blue eyes, but either one of them would look really gorgeous, so. 
That's a that's a great 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 question for this collection. So Shalu was wondering if you could recommend um, a way to help neutralize blue underneath her eyes. Ah, uh, so again, <laughs> back to Peach. So mm -hmm. if you're going to use a concealer under the eyes to neutralize the blue, you don't want to use a white or a yellow concealer because that's going to make either it's either going to turn it green or it's going to just look ashy under there. You want to use a peach colored concealer, something with enough orange in there to neutralize the blue, gray, purple tones. That's how you neutral. You'll notice that some makeup artists these days are putting lipstick up under the eyes before they do their concealer. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is purchase a peachy concealer. My favorite of the peach concealers is the Enlighten Plus. This is my favorite concealer for dark circles. And I'm using number one, you can see. It has the perfect peach pigment for neutralizing darkness around the eyes and blue or gray around the eyes. Really good for that. Awesome, thank you so much. I think that that is all we have for you today. Sean, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure to learn from you and have you demonstrate your amazing artistry to us and to all of our customers. Thank you so much. Absolutely, it's been a joy. Great. Well, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.